Can the sun solve the world's energy needs? New solar technologies using ancient principles promise to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. It's clean and it's endless. We make a large collector concentrating energy of the sun by up to 500 times. What's holding things back? If you wanted to generate all the world's electricity, you could do it with less than 1% of the area of the world's desert. Near Seville in Spain, a groundbreaking project using the sun to generate electricity has become a model for the planet. It's the first commercial operation of solar tower technology in the world. Surrounded by farmland and orange groves, over a thousand freestanding units called heliostats have been planted. The concept of the plant is very ancient and, and very simple. We just uh, concentrate solar radiation into our uh, focus, into our solar receiver, in order to produce high temperature. Uh, with that energy, we produce high temperature to generate steam and to drive a steam turbine like in a conventional power plant. Spain has good solar radiation compared to the rest of Europe. The other thing that Spain had was a government that decided to specifically support a solar industry. The upfront investment cost tends to be very large. At the solar tower plant, the heliostats are arranged in a semicircular pattern around a very tall tower. Each heliostat has a mirror attached to a remotely controlled motorized stand. This vast field of mirrors is precisely choreographed by a central computer to follow the arc of the sun as it crosses the sky of southern Spain. The silence of bouncing sunlight is interrupted like clockwork by the sound of motors making minute adjustments to each mirror. The reflected solar rays are targeted to a spot at the top of the tower. Behind this intense hotspot, water is being boiled and steam is being generated. Temperatures up to 2,000 degrees can be reached. We are uh, operating in temperatures about 450, 500 degrees. The steam drives a turbine. The turbine produces electricity. The electricity is sold to the national grid. This solar platform in the year 2013 will be able to supply all the electricity that a city like Seville uh, could consume, about 200,000 homes. The only difference between a concentrating solar power plant and a nuclear plant or, or a coal-fired plant is you get the heat from the sun instead of getting it from either burning coal or, or um, from nuclear reaction. While sunlight is intermittent, technologies exist to store heat generated during the day. One technology uses tanks of molten salts. Now the great advantage of concentrating solar power is that because it works by creating heat, it's relatively cheap and easy to store heat. The goal is to have a solar plant that generates electricity 24 hours a day. The immediate thing that hits you when you visit a, a solar plant is the size and scale. They, they're huge. Huge towers, in the case of tower technology, the, the market and also the investor community still sees it as high risk. It's still evolving and there are changes happening to the efficiency and effectiveness of the technology year in, year out. Is this visionary plan too good to be true? It's unlikely to have been built and may not survive without government subsidies. 
What you find with renewable technologies and solar is no different is that the upfront investment cost tends to be very large. Uh, solar in particular because most of your money is going into the building of the plant. There are no fuel costs once it's up and running. The next consideration then is what support the government gives to a particular industry. And in the case of Spain, they singled out the solar industry and provided subsidies and incentives in the form of feed-in tariffs over a period of years. Feed-in tariffs provide a government-guaranteed price for electricity sold to the national grid by emerging solar power technologies. At the moment, because it's a, it, in a sense it's an early stage technology, it's still expensive. But there's absolutely no doubt that, uh, that as you get the economies of scale and as people learn to manufacture the plants more efficiently, electricity from concentrating solar power is, is likely to become one of the cheapest sources of electricity in Europe. And that includes the cost of transmission. To fairly compare the cost of solar energy to the cost of gas, oil, coal or nuclear energy, then everyone's subsidies should be factored in. What many people don't realize is the electricity that we enjoy today from conventional um, sources like fossil fuels, oil, gas, coal, um, and to some extent nuclear, um, they're all heavily subsidized in one way or another. So that's part of the reason why people think that these things are cheap, but actually they're, only, they're artificially cheap because they're subsidized. What it would result in, the removal of these subsidies would result in probably increases in the prices of electricity, and that's unpopular. Political and economic realities can work to help and hinder the growth of solar energy. In addition to solar tower plants, Spain boasts one of the world's largest arrays of solar voltaics. Solar voltaic panels, typically made with silicon or other semiconductor materials, create electricity directly from the sun's radiation. Solar cells have been powering NASA satellites since the 1950s. They came into earthbound fashion during the oil crisis of the 1970s. But ambitious SV initiatives fizzled out when the flow of cheap oil resumed. Solar photovoltaics, which of course is a direct conversion of sunlight into electricity, has conventionally been uh, relatively expensive. Over the past decade, solar voltaics have come back into vogue, and with sales going up, their cost is coming down. In the 1970s, it would have cost 30 US dollars per watt uh, to make a solar panel. Now, the very cheapest cost of a solar panel is one and a half dollars per watt um, from the uh, lowest cost manufacturer in China. Traditional solar cells take a broad spectrum approach to converting daylight into energy. White light is composed of many different colours and these colours correspond to different energies. Some parts of the spectrum which make up light have more energy potential than others. The energy spans from the ultraviolet to the infrared. In order to make a highly efficient solar cell we have to build an absorber that's capable of absorbing high energy photons as well as low energy infrared photons. We achieve this by having many different solar cells which are tuned to those specific colours of light. If costs can be kept down, multi-layered solar cell technology is likely to play a much bigger role in producing electricity in the future. It's been estimated that enough solar energy hits Earth in one hour to provide all the world's electricity needs for a year. It's calculations like this which have inspired some renewable energy advocates to think big. Desert Tech is a bold plan to deploy solar energy technology in the world's deserts with the potential of supplying all of the world's electricity needs. Desert Tech is a concept and the basic idea is that in desert regions like the Sahara, there's totally colossal amounts of energy falling from the sky as sunlight, and coupled with which, there's now technology for capturing it cost-effectively and converting it into electricity. Solar towers are only one of many concentrated solar power technologies, or CSP. Parabolic troughs use curved mirrors to focus sunlight on a tube filled with oil. 
The sun's energy is concentrated almost a hundredfold. The oil in the tube is heated up to 500 degrees. The hot oil boils water which generates steam to drive a turbine which produces electricity. CSP plants have been operating in America for decades. In the case of the US plants which were built in the 1980s, they have paid off their loans and currently they produce electricity at around three cents US cents per kilowatt, which is among the cheapest uh, form of electricity in the world today. Cheaper than nuclear, cheaper than coal, cheaper than any other fossil fuel source. One of the world's largest CSP plants is now being built in southern Spain. For anyone who's concerned about the rollout of clean energy that we so urgently need, it's a nice sort of neat, essentially simple technology and it works. Desertec is now a charitable foundation. They're now working in close association with a new Desertec industrial initiative. That's a consortium of, at the moment, 12 large companies that say they plan to um, build CSP plants in mainly in North Africa and the Middle East. There's technology for transmitting it over very long distances, up to 3,000 kilometers, efficiently and cost-effectively using so-called high-voltage direct current transmission lines. Concepts like Desert Tech, which begin to link Western Europe with North Africa and say, if you take a step back and look at the regional picture, in fact, it does make sense. You want to site your plants in the best place on Earth that has the solar radiation that will give you the best return on your investment but then you need to incur the additional investment to connect those plants up to the Western grid, to connect it to an electricity market so that you can get a return on your investment. Another high concept for solar energy production and desert installation is called a solar chimney. The idea is to trap the sun's heat in a greenhouse and use the powerful updraft of hot air to turn a turbine, which generates electricity. If you wanted to generate all the world's electricity, you could do it with an, an area of desert which is less, less than 1% of the area of the world's desert. As a percentage of the world's surface area, it's a tiny amount that's needed to power the whole world every day. The Sahara is, is excellent. Further south in Africa, there's the Nabib Desert, and Australia has amazing solar resource. In places like India and Pakistan, there's the Thar Desert, and there's a lot of sunny deserts in China. These things are not technical problems, they're, they're political problems. Um, it just requires people to sort of have this sense that we have a, a war on our hands and we need someone to kind of give it the push and make it happen. Solar has a huge role it can play. The fact that it's an endless supply of energy the fact that it's uniformly distributed around the world, the fact that the technology exists to capture it and transmit it at the moment, means that the one thing that's needed to unlock much of that really is the political leadership and will.